Has a narcissist ever flipped the script and blamed the things they've done on you? If you've ever experienced that, then this topic is for you. Before I begin, please be advised that this video contains information about domestic abuse and other sensitive issues that can result from psychological abuse. I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, or psychotherapist. I'm speaking as a person who's experienced narcissistic abuse, and I'm sharing the understanding that helped me survive and recover. This video addresses the malignant narcissist and extreme narcissistic behaviors. With that said, let's unpack narcissistic projection. When the narcissist is confronted with facts that they view as a threat to the image of their false self, they respond with projection. Projection is a defense mechanism designed to shift blame from the narcissist onto their target. The narcissist will attack the target with puzzling accusations that aren't consistent with who the target is or the target's conduct. Incredibly, the narcissist will claim the target is victimizing them. If the target protests, the narcissist will double down with threats and rage. The narcissist is a psychological pugilist who uses destructive criticism and toxic shame to vilify their target. This is the aim of narcissistic projection. If the target lacks boundaries, this creates an opportunity for the narcissist to attack and break down the target's self-esteem, self-assurance, and perception of reality. This is the aim of narcissistic projection. So here is where I want you to take note. If you pay close attention when a narcissist is projecting their qualities and behaviors onto you, you will discover the narcissist's deepest fears. Projection is the narcissist's autobiography. During projection, they reveal who they truly are and what they are doing behind your back. So if the narcissist is accusing you of disloyalty, what they're really saying is they are being disloyal. If the narcissist accuses you of being unfaithful, what they're really saying is they are being unfaithful. If the narcissist accuses you of being incompetent, it's because they are incompetent. And so on and so forth, because when a narcissist is projecting, it's like opposite day. If the target does not accept the narcissist's projection, the narcissist will escalate the situation by throwing a tantrum. The narcissist goes into deny, lie, cry strategies. They start ranting and raving. Stage one of the meltdown may include fake tears, shouting, or the narcissist throwing themselves on the floor. However, if the target doesn't buy into their theatrics, the narcissist will escalate to stage two of the meltdown. This is when the narcissist starts hyperventilating, snarling, and screaming. At this extreme, the narcissist may resort to violence or have a panic attack. The panic attack may be real or fake, depending on the narcissist's risk of exposure or the level of attention they get. Of course, they'll blame the target for this too, and the narcissist may even go as far as to claim that the target was trying to quote-unquote kill them. If you are a conscientious person with a moral compass, none of the narcissist's behavior will make any sense to you. A stable person would self-reflect and try to develop their true self. A narcissist is unburdened by facts, morality, or a conscience. In short, the narcissist benefits from their deceptions, so they see no reason to change. Narcissism serves them. It works. In the mind of the narcissist, Facts equal the death of the false persona. Facts end the spell they've cast, and they can't bear to be Cinderella, watching the carriage turn back into a pumpkin and their ball gown turn back into rags. For the narcissist, facts threaten the end of the long con they've been running on their target, but also on the community they've groomed with layers of deception they call charm. This is why they will never admit when they're at fault. They're terrified their whole house of cards will come crashing down and the world will see them for the monsters of selfishness they truly are. Narcissists resort to projection even when they're caught red-handed with a prison record, a Ponzi scheme, or a love child by the person you told them was your best friend. They'll look you dead in the eye and deny it. They'll rage at you for daring to suggest it 
And if they fail to distort reality, they'll claim that you made them do it because you're a bad person, so you deserved every unspeakable and inhumane thing they've done to you. This is narcissistic projection. In their efforts to protect the false persona, their false self, they must flip the script and project all of their worst qualities onto you. In their deluded state, they've assumed your identity and projected their true identity, the fiend that they're hiding behind the mask of the false self, onto you. The narcissist despises their true self because they know that they're degenerates. And if you lack healthy boundaries, the narcissist will project all of their self-loathing onto you. The narcissist takes whatever fact has triggered them, turns it around, and puts it on you. Now you're the problem. Now they can criticize you. So let's look at an example of narcissistic projection. And if you've experienced narcissistic projection, please share your story in the comments below so we can learn from each other. The narcissist spots their target in a conversation with another person who is not the narcissist. The conversation seems pleasant and the narcissist's anxiety is triggered, as is their fear of abandonment. The narcissist is afraid that the target may realize their own value. They're afraid that the target might develop healthy self-esteem and eventually see through the narcissist's false persona. So the narcissist attacks the target because they're scared that the target may snap out of the fog of deception the narcissist uses to control the target's reality. During the attack, the narcissist projects the ugly truth of who they are and what they're doing onto the target. This can take the shape of accusations of disloyalty and betrayal. This can take the shape of accusations of infidelity and shaming the target's sexuality. Once the narcissist has projected all of their qualities onto the target, they begin to devalue the target. You see, the narcissist has externalized their identity and transferred it to the target. They begin to act out their self-loathing by verbally abusing the target with put-downs and threats. Now they've projected their self-loathing onto you. In other words, the narcissist has basically just shit all over you. The target is baffled because, from their point of view, they've done nothing wrong except talk to someone who wasn't the narcissist. From the narcissist's point of view, the target has threatened them and offended their fragile ego. The narcissist feels entitled to punish the target, and they feel absolutely justified. By using projection and devaluation as their tools, the narcissist has reaffirmed their notions of superiority and dominance over the target. By putting you down, the narcissist lifts themselves up. All of the narcissist's dysfunctional behaviors, their projection, their rage, their punishments, are tools they use to intimidate, coerce, and control their target. These psychological attacks from the narcissist leave the target in a state of confusion and despair. The target may even question their reality. These tyrants make themselves judge, jury, and executioner so they can wage an attack on the target's human rights. The horror of what narcissists do is that they weaponize love. They will use your love to exploit and abuse you. They have created a persona that is utterly fake it is the false persona that you have fallen in love with. By misrepresenting who they are, the narcissist is committing fraud. The false persona is no more real than a character in a novel or a TV sitcom, and the narcissist knows this because they've created many fake personas, all of them tailored to ingratiate the narcissist with their various targets. The world is their stage. This is why the narcissist is so callous about your feelings toward their false persona. They know they've duped you, and they have absolutely no respect for you, because to them, you're just a mark. They think you're idiotic and gullible, because you lack the discernment to see through them. When the narcissist is inflicting pain on you, it's easy for them not to have any mercy or compassion. The narcissist is constantly seething with resentment over the fact that if you saw them for what they truly are, you wouldn't love them at all. And every moment you stay with them, their true, diabolical self is peeking at you from behind the curtain of the false persona. Ensconced in the false self, the narcissist's predatory, true self is studying you with cold, 
devious calculation, testing the length and breadth of you. They see you, but you can't see them, because you have been deceived, and the longer you stay, the more they will hate you. There are so many examples of how this hatred manifests as suffering and tragedy. This is my motivation for making this video. Too many people succumb to narcissistic abuse because the pain of the deception and betrayal is overwhelming. By the time you discover the truth about the narcissist, they have set traps all around you. When you wake up, you find that the narcissist has been smearing you behind your back in an effort to turn everyone you have ever loved or done a kindness for against you. They are sadists who gloat in satisfaction as they watch their targets gasp for air after they've isolated them by destroying their relationships and cutting off their support system. If you are a survivor of narcissistic abuse, you must understand that narcissists are extremely weak and fragile. They feel threatened by anything that may expose their true self. This is why they have such a ferocious need for control. Once the narcissist knows you've caught a glimpse of the monstrous true self they keep hidden behind the mask of the false persona, you are in grave danger. This is the moment when the malignant narcissist will threaten to take your life. Once you discover who they are and they know that you know, the narcissist will blindside you. They have the advantage because they never loved you. They've been smearing you and have set cluster bombs with everyone you know that will detonate the moment you speak out. You realize that the narcissist is a wolf in sheep's coat. Once you have seen the narcissist's true self, you become a threat. Now the narcissist will make it their mission to destroy you socially, psychologically, and or physically. It's going to take everything you have to survive the narcissist's onslaught because they will subject you to every kind of emotional terrorism there is. When the mask is gone, you will be faced with raw, unadulterated domestic violence. According to the Romero study from 1985, a comparison of the strategies used on prisoners of war with strategies used by domestic abusers found that they used very similar tactics on their targets. Both use psychological abuse within the context of violence. Both use emotional dependency based on intermittent reinforcement. Both use isolation from the target support system, resulting in validation of the abuser's beliefs and behavior. The result in both cases is the destruction of the target's identity and independence. The loss of identity and independence is what keeps the target going back for more. Shockingly, the result of narcissistic abuse is indistinguishable from the psychological torture experienced by prisoners of war. Many survivors of narcissistic abuse develop a host of disorders from panic disorder to major depression to post-traumatic stress disorder, usually seen in soldiers returning from war zones. So, there are a lot of dangers involved, both in confronting a malignant narcissist and in leaving them. For female survivors of narcissistic abuse, statistics show that their life is most at risk when they leave. For male survivors of narcissistic abuse, leaving the narcissist is when they are most likely to take their own lives. This is why it's disingenuous to ask survivors why they stay. Sometimes, staying is all you can do to survive. In a situation like this, to get out, you have to back away very, very slowly and make sure the narcissist does not know you are going to go because when they feel threatened, they are dangerous. If you haven't gotten out, I would like to encourage you to consider quietly, carefully, cautiously making plans for your exit. Get help by calling your local domestic violence hotline so that you can go to a safe place and get support from people the narcissist hasn't contaminated. Until then, keep learning everything you can about what happened to you while you were under the spell of the narcissist's deception. If you're on the other side of no contact, I want to congratulate you. I know you've been to hell and back. 
Over time, there will be more good days than bad days. One thing I always say to survivors is this, if you gave yourself even a fraction of the love you wasted on the narcissist, you'll be living your best life in no time. Know this, everything you've been through has a purpose. Part of the healing process is sharing what we've lived. So please use your voice and comment your experience of narcissistic abuse and recovery. Your story may save someone's life and free them from the bondage of narcissistic abuse. If you like this video, please share it with two friends and support this channel by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. We'll talk again soon.